Hello and welcome to Hey, I Loved That Movie, the podcast where we re-watch the films we loved when we were younger to see if they still hold up. I'm Dan. I'm Michael. I'm Helena. And for this episode, we have a very special guest. It's Ben Russell. Hello. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you very much for, for coming on. Uh, which movie have you brought to us today? Uh, well, I bought... T- I, so I gave you two options and both are animated. One is was called Flight of the Dragons, which is this old animated sort of short... It's a quick movie, but it's real hokey and fucked up, but it's got great music. Uh, The one that we decided on was The Adventures of Mark Twain. Which is a stop-motion animation claymation (laughs) style movie uh which you think it's just about mark twain and his characters tom sawyer and huckleberry finn or whatever the fuck yeah but it it takes a hard right into some pretty (laughs) wild biblical shit that at the time (laughs) i did not even i did not even pick up on when i was a kid we had it we recorded it we used to live in new zealand we recorded off new zealand television and then I rewatched it recently, and it's got this massive b- biblical overtones to it. And also, there was a bit that was edited out. It's like uh, the Satan shows up, and Satan's in there, but the Satan bit is goes on for a lot longer in the non. Yeah. They edited it out because <laughs> it wasn't suitable for kids back in the nineties <laughs> in New Zealand. And I can kind of see why it's pretty fucking weird shit it really is a bit, it, bit odd it's, it was it's, not what i expected yeah no it's very odd to be uh, watching what is from what i from what i could um read upon it it is the first feature length like claymation like movie yeah it's right like the, the first proper one and for that just to be like hey here's satan he's gonna tell you that life is meaningless and humans yeah. mean nothing <laughs> <Here you go. laughs> it really comes yeah. out of nowhere it really um, comes out of nowhere is satan's just yeah just hanging out on the airship and they go in his magic elevator and go meet him and he's ah and then there's like a good tom a good mark twain and a bad mark twain it's a wild ride it's like every claymation film has that like veneer of nightmare to it all of them even (laughs) like the like wallace and gromit have like a a thin sheen of it feels like a nightmare (laughs) but this one really goes into it it really leans into it um yeah it's a, it's crazy, and it's got a. There's this bit about uh, Adam and Eve, yep. which uh, yeah, it's. I mean, f- to be honest, from what I can tell, Mark Twain, uh, judging by this movie, didn't go on that many adventures. He just heard about a cool frog and read the Bible. Yep, mm, that's <laughs> those it. are his adventures according to this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes and kills himself in Haley's Comet. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, basically. He becomes Haley's <laughs> Comet uh-huh. in the end. Spoiler alert. Yeah, I think yeah. so. <laughs> Don't worry. It's a twist. Um, Spoilers for a movie from 1985. <laughs> it's also a twist. No it one a... would know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a very strange film. And it starts out so like fun and yeah. innocent. Yeah. I um I'd actually seen that that Satan clip, the one that I that that was cut before, and just to sort of put in perspective for watchers how fucked up it is, I saw that in a compilation YouTube video of uh, yeah. scenes too fucked up yeah. to show on kids TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a strange thing just to have like these pretty crazy Christian ideologies. It just... really relies on you having like a good knowledge Child. of the works of mark twain which i think no kids in the 80s no. really did and i one thing that stood out to me which sets the the tone for this book as, or this film as well was like at the start he's like oh what's a classic a classic yeah. book everyone wants to have read but no one wants to read yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like that's all of mark twain's works because i've <laughs> I've got a degree in literature. I've not read a single one of his books. Oh my goodness! <laughs> he wrote. He wrote the story. He wrote the Fall of Man. Is what we learned from this film. <laughs> he wrote the Bible. Yeah, he wrote the. That's what. It, what he did. He did. Was. He wrote da- the Diary of Eve. Was one of his books, and yeah. so was like excerpts of the Diary of Adam. But I don't know. I couldn't tell. Like, is this a spoof of Mark Twain's works, uh, or is is that how it is in his books? I don't... Like, I'm. 
<laughs> I didn't do enough research for the podcast in that I didn't actually go and read his books oh to God, find yes. out. What sort of podcast is this? <laughs> yeah. We didn't do any research. And it's, but I know that the Jumping Frog of Calaveras County is, it was one of his first sort of short stories that he wrote. So I know about that yeah. one. And I know about the, about Huckleberry Finn and, and Tom Sawyer yeah. and, and, but that's kind of, that's where it ends. Why were you watching this film as a child? Why were you watching this? As I said, it was just recorded off, we had a VHS and we would record anything and everything off the TV. And it was just one of those things that was on TV. I, I, it's one of the great things about VHS is that you kind of have these versions of these movies imprinted in your mind. So it feels weird when it doesn't have those weird 80s New Zealand commercials. Uh, I have one with like Star, Star Wars A New Hope. There's a bit where my tape skips <laughs> in a part of it. And it like says a couple of things over, like repeats it. And it feels weird watching it back now on a digital copy and it being it being the way it is. I'm like, oh, that's that doesn't fucking work for me. <laughs> so it is, this was just one of the ones. I don't know who recorded it. I think it was I think it was recorded in sort of 85, 86 back when I was a, a an infant. It was it was just always there. This one. We always just had it. I don't understand I mean... it. Yeah, it's quite heavy for an infant. Mm. Well, I would. I have... think, but in a, it would have glossed over. Mm. I think I would have. I mean, I discovered it when I was a little bit older, and uh, you know, the the Satan was a frightening character when he kills when he destroys the village. I can imagine yeah. this because I don't think it's gonna. I'm. It's gonna ever leave me. Yeah, it's definitely got some, a some grip on... trauma there. It's so. <laughs> it's it's. Because yeah, I know I know exactly what you mean from like having v- tons of VHS recordings of stuff with like the tape with something scratched mm. on as quickly as possible, and it, it's weird mm. watching those films again without adverts every fifteen minutes. Mm. Or just because uh, someone would just forget to press pause when the adverts come on, or they'd forget to press pause when the am- adverts come off, so you'd get like chunks that were missing, or yeah. yeah. You'd get like five minutes of the episode show that was on just before. Yep. Yep. Loved Classic. it. It was great. I wish, I wish Netflix yeah. was more like that and just had... <laughs> 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 I, wish, I wish there was a streaming service that was just direct uploads of VHS film. Oh, that would be so TV. good. Oh, I mean, I know that we're getting slightly off topic, but a lot of those VHS movies are just lost. You, yeah. There are movies that, that you just cannot find on the streaming services. Because they're just kind of... And there's a lot of home videos that have been taped over. Yeah. With disturbing <laughs> kids' <laughs> movies. And this is one of them. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I think I liked it. I still... I love this movie. I think it was so cool. I love the claymation of it. Uh, I think the animation is really good. Yeah, it's, an, it's a really good film. It's just strange. Mm. <laughs> yeah, for, for the first, like, yeah, full-length claymation movie, it is really good. And, like... As weird as the Satan bit was, the design of the the Satan thing, where it's just like this armor that's holding yeah, the face mask up, mm. it, it was really cool. Like it, it it's is... really taken some, yeah, nice little liberties with with style and yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, it is cool. It is a cool representation of of evil. But uh... yeah, especially the way he sucks the kids in in like getting them involved in designing the people, <laughs> giving mm. them giving them clay, which was wonderfully. Horrifying. Yeah. It's yeah. Really existential. Um, yeah. Hey, have have a chunk of flesh yeah. and life itself. And I'll I'll um, make them alive. And then squishing them. And then I'm gonna kill yeah. them. That was the weird part. It wasn't like the god yeah. devil thing was like he let the people destroy themselves, which is horrifying to show a child. <laughs> As a yeah. <laughs> yeah, I honestly thought they were gonna tear that cow in half yeah. when they were like both hmm. pulling at it. It's like. But no, instead he was like, right, time for a storm and an earthquake and everything's going to die. And they're all talking and in gibberish. Them. It's real messed up. Yeah. Oh, no. Bah, 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 bah. The one's crying over like a dead person in the street. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's clay blood. I think this is, this is where the inspiration for The Sims came from, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> is, is this a kid's film? <laughs> I don't. Because the rest of it is kind of very child friendly. Well, I mean, that's the, the most part. It's very reminiscent of the 80s to have kids' shows that were just 
fucked up. You know, Watership yeah. Down is a horrifying adventure. That's again, I don't, I wouldn't, could never consider that Ed's film. I consider <laughs> it, it was it something was parents kid's... accidentally show. That's <laughs> yeah, that that is a film I saw by accident because of its animation style, being like, oh, bunnies, yeah. and then watching it, and then my mom coming in like, I don't think you should watch that, and I'm like, why? Ten minutes later. Oh, oh no! <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch of them that are just have these moments of I don't know, just terror, or yeah. or ho- horror in there. Dread. I, yeah, or dread, or just <laughs> just bizarre shit that happens. And this is definitely in that category. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the overarching plot is is basically the three three kids from his book huckleberry finn tom sawyer and becky the kid that he's like yep. you look like my wife did <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a yeah. Bit weird. yeah that that was a bit mm. yeah that, um yeah when you they stow like away that, on that his suicide strange. mission <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in yeah, an he's, airship he's, he's made this airship to try and go and fly to Haley's comet mm-hmm. because he was born yeah. when Haley's comet went round, so he's gonna die when it comes back yeah and I assumed it was by getting hit by the comet, but it's not. <laughs> it's absorbing into. Well, it. he did yeah. die. He did. He was. I mean, that that is true, though, isn't it? He was born when Haley's comet arrived, and then when it came back around, he died. Yeah, because yeah, it's every seventy on. years or so. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Was that by design? As in, did he kill himself, or was that just I don't, weird coincidence? I think it was just weird coincidence. Yeah. Um, was that that makes this film have a real dark, yeah, otherwise a way very, darker tone, very if... dark. <laughs> I make this but I mean, it's. I find this the animation style. Like, I think it's amazing, and I loved how effect. Like, they use the clay so much. Like, with everything, like mold, melding into each other, things like popping up and springing out of nowhere. Yeah, that was so cool. Um, was fantastic, but I did find it quite hard to look at, especially the kids. Mm. Yeah. the the worst The worst looking thing I think was the baby that Adam and Eve have because its yeah. eyes were just <laughs> a bit yeah. too weird. <laughs> Like the the rest of them looked like there's the sort of weird uncanny valley of like they're they're human enough, but then yeah, the the baby was just just weird. And this retelling <laughs> of of Adam and Eve really pins it all on Eve. Like I mean, I know that mm. the yeah. Bible usually <laughs> pins it all on Eve, but like it's all just like at least it. But it also it's 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 not just incredibly misogynistic. It's it's very um, misandrist. Misandrist. Say that word. Misandrist, yeah. In that, yeah. Adam is such a fucking idiot. Yeah, yeah, he really uh, is. Like, he, like I didn't he, think he can't he put could two and two together and get anything yeah. close to four. <laughs> he just loves naming shit. Him just riding a waterfall was pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, in a barrel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was fun. I um, like that. Bit. Yeah, it was. It yeah, it was. I mean, it just it was so left field. I think because I did. I I think if I knew more about Mark Twain, like was he at the time? Because I assume it's an American film. Yeah. Was he like on their school literature thing? Like, is was it more like expected yeah. that kids knew more about him? Because we did Steinbeck, and that was kind of it for American mm. literature at school. So I'm like, yeah, I had I had no idea until I looked into the the quite helpful Wikipedia page yeah, on I this film. I don't know it's... how much it referenced his books. Yeah. See, I don't know either because Mark Twain is is near impenetrable for me. Or impenetrable, mm. I should say. Like, I just cannot get into him. I, I, for American classics, I like more the fifties beatnik type era. And even then, that's that was just because I liked it in my youth because I was an idiot and I thought it was like cool and hip and annoying. Um, <laughs> you know, it's nothing worse. I have than... suggested, hey, I loved that book, but the boys aren't keen. <laughs> there's, it's there's a lot of effort <laughs> to read an entire book. <laughs> a bit long. There's nothing more tedious than like an eighteen-year-old that reads jack kerouac and uh thinks that he fucking gets it or whatever the fuck you're just like oh get this get this guy away from me please <laughs> yeah i'm yeah we've had that with a few of the movies yes too. i was gonna say there's, there's worse <laughs> kids that watch kids that watch all day I, I can, people that watch like fight club and go i completely understand it and miss the entire point which happens mm. often <laughs> yeah yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Um, Fight Club's kind of... People hate that film now. I think that it's still a pretty fine film. Um, I did love it when I was a kid, when I was a boy, a teen. But now I think it's it, it's not saying how cool these people are. 
No. It is kind of it kind of calls out. You can watch it with more context. Like now, now, now that we're old and you're watching it, you're like, oh yeah, okay, no, that's not not how I want yeah. to be. If anything, like, it kind of predicts the radicalization and the militarization of incel culture. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Li- it just like, listen to calls it. The author talk about it. I, re- I recommend going read it if you really want to know about Fight Club. Listen to the author talk about the the book. Really interesting because he's um, mm. it, it was it was essentially him going. There are no role mo- role models for men, so the role models that are going to appear are going to be awful. They're going to be really toxic if someone mm. doesn't step in. Interesting. And it, yeah, yeah, it's weird that he was right. <laughs> well, I think nowadays you either have to like it's the Disneyfication of a lot of things. Yeah, where you can't just have flawed fucked up characters and not turn to the camera every five minutes and go by the way i'm a bad person because <laughs> this racism is bad you know like we're not uh, we can't even having someone that is awful on screen you're like this is they're saying that this person is the best yep you're like no that's not that's not what they're saying <laughs> yeah. No, it's, yeah. yeah i think that's a thing that teenagers uh, we've, I think we've we've covered this in the in the podcast before. Is that you kind of automatically like the main character mm. and want to see the best in them? So with, oh gosh, was it our first or second episode with Wanted? Yeah, like, yeah. you kind of want to like James McAvoy, even though he's a whiny cunt. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and um, and you're like, oh, he's so cool because he's learning to be an assassin, and I could be an assassin, and oh, I could bend bullets, and I could definitely kiss angelina jolie isn't that cool and then as an adult you're watching it it's like oh my god can someone just shoot this kid and get over it? <laughs> yeah that's that's how i felt when i was watching it and that's why i pitched this podcast to you guys <laughs> <laughs> but, but also like films are so afraid of making the main character bad. like they have to be likable to a degree mm. that like there are no like completely awful main characters anymore because they all have to you hit, the audience has to like them a little bit I think you end they up can, they can just be bad. doing that anyway. Say like Harvey Cartel, Bad Lieutenant. You end up l- loving this character even though he is just a Awful. human rat. Like he is one of the worst. <laughs> and I love seeing that. I love seeing a downfall sort of story with someone that's just borrowed time working their way. You know, it, it's it's one of my favorite types of stories. I absolutely love them. That being said, I don't know who who would you say is the main character of this movie, the Mark Twain film. The Mark Twain books, I think, are the main characters. Mm. Yeah. As, as, Various, the city well, is the, a character. The concept yeah. of Mark Twain's brain. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because none of the like, I'd say, I'd say the ship is the main character. It's certainly the most interesting. Yeah. Part of the the um, I mean, film is it Huck that's like moving cool. the story forward. Yeah, the ginger. It's yeah. Yeah, I can't remember which one it was. I, forget. I think he's. They like said their name. I think, I think Tom Sawyer yeah. is the ginger one, and then Hook is the Tom the twelve-year-old kid that's that when you first meet him, he's just smoking a pipe because yeah. you know he's, that's fine. That's what all twelve-year-old kids do in the eighties. Yeah, no, I think Huck. I th- <laughs> I'm pretty. Uh, yeah, I don't know actually. I could argue, no. but I'm I don't I, know my basis which. is I don't know. <laughs> yeah, don't know which one's which. <laughs> I think Tom Sawyer is the ginger one, and I think yeah. he he moves bits of the story forward in that he's the one that's like, right, we're gonna hijack the ship, capture mm. like capture Mark Twain, hijack the ship, and get home before he kills us all in this death comet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we haven't even talked about the fact that the main plot is them trying to kidnap <laughs> to to tie mm. up Mark Twain. That's what? And they do yeah, it, they, but they, they want to get rid of him so they can steal the ship. They kidnap him, <laughs> which I think bad. isn't actually a bad idea. They don't. They don't think, oh, let's throw him overboard. Let's slit his throat. Mm. Let's, you know, <laughs> let's cling film his face. Mm. Like they, they go, oh, well, we'll tie him up. <laughs> yeah, we'll tie him up, and and ignore the fact that every so often they keep seeing this mysterious looking figure that looks suspiciously like Mark Twain, mm. but in dark clothing. So I called in my notes. Yep. I've just have him written down as Dark Twain. You know what bit yeah. is He's the character. <laughs> what bit is confusing but awesome is when they're trying to they're navigating inside the comet. Yeah. With the lee mm. they're shooting off the whatever the hell that is and saying those whatever the hell they're saying. They're just shouting yeah. words. 
just shouting, yeah. and then they eventually shout Mark Twain for some reason. Mark Twain! <laughs> I don't even get it. it. Must I don't even reference. understand what's no. going on. But Well, Twain, Twain was a... Um, it was a nautical... Not nautical term, but like... um, Because uh, he, he chose his name. He wasn't actually born Mark Twain. No, he? he wasn't. It was something else. And he... I remember... This is the only thing I know about Mark Twain, which is embarrassing. <laughs> that and, like, I have a very weird idea of what the book... Of what Tom Sawyer did through my... Yeah year six musical i feel like um, every grandpa talks like how mark twain writes densely yeah. <laughs> densely and complicated and, yeah <laughs> every grandpa well knows. yeah and that was so yeah. weird was like every now and then he'd be like well i've kidnapped you and i'm not letting you go but do you want to hear a story kids yeah okay <laughs> and yeah. they're like it, yeah all right <laughs> come on down to my way too long to realize that the elevator was going through his stories as well mm. and i imagine that if i'd read more of well any <laughs> of his then it would have made more sense like when, when they're like oh there's junji joe and he's like a weird like horrific caveman murderer yeah. and i'm like the closest i have to that is when we watched the hills have eyes <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> injun joe i guess is one of the more problematic uh-huh uh, yeah. characters of mark twain i mean i do find that adam and eve story is as you said heinously misogynistic but that's but also so is the Bible. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not to get, not to get Ricky Gervais on everyone. Um, <laughs> no, you could never be that bad. <laughs> God doesn't exist. <laughs> um, but um, we get it. But it is pretty fucked up. I did like the yeah. I like the jumping frog story. Yeah, that was a nice way to start because yeah. it it started like it was mm. it was gonna like periodically go through all of his stories and it felt like that's mm. what the film was it was like oh this is a way to show kids like the mark twain stories in like condensed version and then it went yeah. no we're gonna get horrible <laughs> we're gonna get nightmare yeah and then you find out mark twain's actually yeah. not for kids yeah yeah it's not yeah. he's not and it was like, Here's a... so that's who who is this for yeah i was trying to work that really? i was like why did they make this and who is it for yeah. I guess Mark Twain fans? Would Mark I Twain fans guess. like this film? Because it's not... I can't imagine it's super right. accurate. <laughs> I don't know. It, there, it It is bewildering. It's honestly like, I'm not sure because it... From how upsetting parts of the, the scenes are and like the concept and the, the just the death yeah. and, the, art, and the, yeah. the like examination of ego and all of, all of that is it's not kid-friendly. But then... It's very colourful. Yeah, it is, and, and they are on a they are on a uh, an airship, and, and they are kids, and they have cool. these cool. I remember that when they go into that land, the stony land, and he's just talking to no one. Like that's cool and moody. It's spooky. Yeah, yeah it's weird, yeah. and I I like how even um even through like the Adam and Eve story bit, they're just adding like random humour into it as well to try. Yeah. And, like keep you engaged and i mean it worked so. yeah like i did quite like the bit where she like eve just keeps putting signs on everything the naming stuff mm -hmm. was Adam's like, huh? good <laughs> the yeah what what did crack me up on that was obviously the we talked about the barrels and basically he's um adam's like well what's the point of a waterfall unless you go over it and yeah. she's got all these signs up that are like danger water keep out and then lifeguard not on duty yeah. <laughs> and things like that. they do get comets completely wrong though and that is a big pretty disappointed with them uh for that it's all fire and hot yeah aren't well, comments icy yeah comments are just big fucking balls of eyes that go you know that are moving real fast that's it end of story <laughs> the, that's the worst scientific inaccuracy in this film yeah it's it's i mean it's an armageddon level bullshit you know yeah um yeah. <laughs> maybe in maybe in this film it's on fire because it's entered the earth's atmosphere yeah and what you don't Everyone see is, is shortly after yeah. everything dies. Yeah. Must have missed they that bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. though. <laughs> yeah, it gets, yeah, that was cut out on the uh, on the version. <laughs> no, they were like that. The, the fiery death ending and the devil need to go. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Yeah, the devil part is crazy, it's... and it keeps going too. So there's an extended part. I saw the death like when he kills the village, but then there's another part where he's chatting about, and his his face is changing, and it's all. It's all real bizarre shit. Ugh. But the ending of that, when it just fades into the eye of Mark Twain, has always freaked me out yeah. as a child and as an adult yeah. as well. Yeah, I don't think that's ever going to... That image is never going to leave me. That, like, weird face. <laughs> awful. 
the face is horrible, but then, yeah, seeing it, like, it cut, cuts to Mark Twain's face and you just have the devil reflection in one of his pupils. Mm. What does it mean? And it's just... Ugh. What does it mm. mean? Like, what does that mean in terms of, like, media analysis? What does that mean? Is Mark Twain... The devil is inside <laughs> all the hearts of men. Is Mark Twain evil? Is that what it's trying to tell us? Well, there's well a, one of them was. Yeah, there's a good Mark <laughs> yeah, Twain and a bad Mark Dark, Dark, Dark Twain. Twain was. Dark Twain. Yeah, I mean, he does say that he's got... When when the kids ask him about heaven and hell, he's like, oh, I wouldn't know, I've got friends in both. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that must be a genuine Mark Th- that's Twain That's a direct quote. quote. Yeah, it has to be. For yeah. sure. Yeah, there's, there was a lot of things in here where I was like, that was really quite, quite, quite a nice quote, like quite profound. And then I was like, they didn't yeah. just make this up. No way. <laughs> no. Uh, he was a great orator, Mark Twain. Yeah. Mm. And he was known yeah. for more his just public oration. And he's very quotable. Heaven for the atmosphere, hell for the company. Mm. Yeah, mm. heaven for the climate. And, that was another... and then I, oh. I like how I complete. I watched this last night and I'd forgotten about it already. But the bit where he tells the story of the guy trying to get into heaven, but it's like a weird alien nightclub heaven. Oh, that was so good. I love that bit. <laughs> That's great. That that <laughs> really so... did. That was yeah, surreal. Throw that me was off. real. Because that was like right after yeah. the devil. The devil stuff. Mm. Yeah. Really weird. And then he goes into a... I was I wasn't sure that the devil wasn't going to come back at that point, so I was like, yeah. oh god, <laughs> on edge. He goes into an alien gay nightclub. Yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> yeah, he gets he beautifully gets... animated tail bopping. Yeah, three three headed aliens are bopping around, and then they're all just sharing cigars and beers and stuff all the time. <laughs> like most of the characters in this movie yeah. are just like you know riffing cigars. cigars. The whole time. Yeah, I want to go to. <laughs> well, I guess like, that's easier to animate than a cigarette. Yeah. It's too thin. Yeah, <laughs> I want to go to Alien Hell, um, Heaven, more than. Uh, yeah, 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 no, definitely. <laughs> and I think that's fun. the point it makes as well is yeah. that human heaven is really fucking boring. <laughs> yeah. Boring. Because he, he, he gets shushed. Yeah, he gets all his gubbins, and then he's like, they're like shh shh, and he's like oh sorry, and he has to like. Shh. I, lo- I do like that character. Yeah. Oh, Arch- was he called Archibald? I don't know. I can't remember. I have no, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one of us should have read a Mark Twain book before. No way. Well, I didn't know him. I just yeah. thought it was going to be a nice kids animation. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that clip, of, but I'd never, I would never. I saw it so long ago that I, I didn't know it was from this film until obviously the, the devil clip. appears. And I'm like, yeah. you. <laughs> I've yeah. seen you before. It's I, I had that because I, I watched it as well. I watched the devil clip online, and it's, it's just like weird childhood horror film. And as I was watching this, I was like, "Why do I recognize this animation style?" And then they saw the devil. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, there it is. That's why." <laughs> it's strange because no he one haunted me before. Because we moved yeah. to we moved to Australia shortly after. We didn't spend much time in New Zealand, and so I just had this movie, and I. It was that and Flight of the Dragons, and I was the only one that had this had this stuff. Like these two films in particular, no one else. I really grew up with these two films, and they both had quite an impact on me. But no yeah. one else. I couldn't imagine them not having an impact on you. <laughs> but it was such an isolation. You couldn't like go, "How crazy was that, man?" It was so you know, yeah. no, because it was just it was just something that was specific to your family. Because they were in so New did you have siblings or time. did your parents watch it? Uh, or was it just you at home glued to the screen? I know my brother did watch it. Um I don't know if my parents watched it, but I, I would I would just l- l- slurp it up. Yeah. Slurp it up big time. And it all it never got taped over. It's probably mm. still I ho- I don't know if we've gotten rid of all of our VHSs, I hope not, but um it's probably still in a bucket somewhere. That'd be amazing if you just found it. <laughs> like, oh, there it is. I would need a the VHS. One VHS copy left of this movie. <laughs> mm, I would need a VHS player for sure. Yeah, it will barely function. It will barely. It's a, an old VHS tape that you watched a lot. It's not going to be viewable anymore. Yeah, no, no. I can't imagine that. <laughs> but that we've being got the case either. Whenever we've had guests on, or even us, everyone seems to have that like one or two films where it feels like only they watched and no one else has even heard of. And it feels like mm-hmm. everyone has that phenomenon happen. And it's really interesting. We haven't come across two people yet that have the same one. Yeah, yeah. it was interesting. And, and I, my best friend, Scott, he was an only child and he was spoiled because of it. He would always have the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo and then oh. later the Plastation. Yeah. 
I hate him already. <laughs> and he had all the Transformers <laughs> toys. Oh, it's so good to have a friend like that because you just go over to his house. Yeah, and that's true. I imagine your toys. parents really liked him as well. He's <laughs> like, yeah, go play with the toys there. My, yeah, <laughs> my thing was of money. <laughs> messed up shows on VHS because yeah. we had so many. Um, mm. and, his, and he was the first person to like, be like, hey, check this out. It's a movie called Akira. And we were just kids and he had it and we were just like, what the fuck is this? And then after that, it was Neon Genesis <laughs> Evangelion. You know, we were just watching going, this is cooked. What the fuck is this, mm. man? <laughs> I love that. I think that's such a cool, because we didn't have the internet. Yeah. It was mm. in that sort of weird time when the internet was around, but not at all. Not just yet. Not really usable. Yeah, it was just up there. It was just emails and low quality Simpsons web files. Mm. Uh, mm. So you had to earn that weird shit. And when you when you were the keeper of it, it was so cool, and you felt really cool doing yeah. it and finding that weird stuff. I don't know. I don't. Know, I feel sorry for children now because weird shit's everywhere. Yeah, it exactly. really loses its its sparkle. Yeah. I mean, that's why I said, like, you know, we watched this clip on, on a compilation or a sort of listicle of things that children probably shouldn't see. And as a child, you're like, lick? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, the things I was that a child I shouldn't guess see. young, but it was YouTube, so it can't have been, yeah. can't have been yeah. like, obnoxiously young. But, um, yeah, I don't think there's an age where this isn't disturbing, but at least, you know, you've got the mental faculties <laughs> to try and self-soothe after yeah. seeing it. I mean, that yeah. is true. The good news about... If you watch this when you were too young, and like I did, you don't know how weird and fucked up it is. You've got no mm. sort of real perception yeah. or concept of this sort of thing. It's only until you can look back on it and go, "Oh, I sh- that that was weird." Yeah, that was that's fucked weird. up. Because <laughs> it's not gory, and it's not. I mean, apart from obviously the weird devil clip, which you said you didn't see. No, I saw the killing, um, the killing of the city, but then I think there's a bunch more in there that got cut. Oh, oh, okay, okay. So no, you, you, yeah, it's not horribly violent in a way that my, I think my parents and a lot of parents would turn it off. Mm. It's just, yeah. it's weird and it's psychologically quite complicated, but it isn't like, you know, there's no sex, there's no Mm-mm. blood, there's no knives and stabbing and all that kind of. But it's dealing stuff. with concepts and themes. That are mm. what that are they are pitching way above children's television or yeah. t- children's movie. It's uh, it, that brings us back to who is this made for, mm. and I still have no idea. Yeah. I don't have an answer for that because sometimes you have like kids shows that are a bit like weirdly raunchy or have lots of like inappropriate jokes that would go up, but they're designed to go over kids' heads so mm. that it's watchable for the parent. Mm. It's like watching um, when you watch Blazing Saddles for the first time, and when you because yeah. I watched that early, way early, because uh, we were a big Mel Brooks household and didn't understand most of the shit that was going on there, but loved it <laughs> all the same. Same with Young Frankenstein and all, you know, all of them. Oh, mm. I love that. I love young. I think kids are just so used to not understanding what's going on mm. around them that they it's don't. Fine. Like, if you don't have. Yeah, you just like, oh, okay, I don't, I don't get this. I'm gonna go and like bash my transformers together for a bit instead. And it's the genius of The Simpsons, which made it for everyone. So mm. it was for mm. adult and kid. But this doesn't have that. It's not for either. Layered approach. <laughs> it's not for either. It's yeah. It's <laughs> no. somehow kind of there's nothing for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of everything for, you know, something for everyone like the Simpsons is, you don't get other jokes or references, but you still enjoy, you know, Bart being a bad boy and saying Kalbunga. But for this, you're just like, uh, Mark Twain lovers. Okay, sure. But this is for kid. This is claymation for kids. It's sort of silly in parts. Yeah. It's not for adults clearly, but it's not, it's not for kids. It's not, it's not for teens. It's far too dense for children. Yeah. It's far too childish for teenagers. And it's and not it saying seems... anything parents aren't already aware of. Mm. You My say guess like is Mark... that this was made for the director who made it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think so. I have an idea. Big Mark yeah. Twain stan. Yeah. yeah. It 
but it's he weird. He had because, a load like... of clay in a book, and he was like, "You know what? <laughs> <laughs> Got an idea." <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, that reminds me of that scene from Parks and Rec where. Oh yeah. Uh, Wyatt's character is like, well, "Could a depressed person make this?" <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's been like two weeks. <laughs> two, it's been like two standing weeks. up. Yeah, it's two minutes stop motion animation. <laughs> that's um, that's exactly what this was. This was a depressed guy with clay and a bunch of Mark Twain. Yes, box. this was depression. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's exactly what it is. It's either, you know, he's in the, it's a, you know, bipolar person that's had their. This is both their manic, and their low point. <laughs> And they're having a crisis Ooh. of and faith. You... <laughs> <laughs> it, it didn't do super well at the box office what either, I unsurprisingly. What? <laughs> what? That's shocking. What? You mean people didn't watch, like, the end of the frog bit and go, now it's weird? Um, <laughs> so a budget of 1.5 million, wow. and it made just under 850,000. Oh. So it lost a, lost a fair chunk of cash, but that's that's a... 1.5 million doesn't seem it doesn't seem like enough money to make a stop a feature length stop motion film. It was the 80s. Yeah. Oh, I suppose was, yeah. Apparently it took three and a half years to make wow. and then even when it was finished they waited like a year or two until it coincided with Haley's comic coming past again and they were like, "Now, go." Uh, <laughs> yeah. So strange. Yeah. It's such a strange That's... thing that happened that makes no sense. Really impressive though. It's it really very, impressive yeah. like made. Because even modern, like, claymation stuff don't do half the stuff that's in this film. Like, them stepping through the weird elevator door thing, mm. and they're just kind of half phasing through it. Yeah. I watched, the first time, like, I watched that and I went, that's cool. And then I realized that it's claymation and they had to, like, have these, like, half of a character and then, like, that's so impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's... Like, the, the technicalities of this movie are, are really good. Yeah. Yeah. Like... It's technically amazing. It's worth watching just alone for the animation, I think, because yeah. I think it's it's pretty cool. And the, the, I love and the design you, of the it's... airship. Yeah, it's incredible. And then you get to the devil yeah, scene and... and you forget everything else about the film. <laughs> <laughs> the airship was really, um, yeah, fan- fantastic. It had that um, that sort of Wallace and Gromit charm mm. yeah. to it, but just like up a few notches because it wasn't even remotely trying to be in any way logical. Mm-mm. Yeah. No. And just... um, I my one of my favorite bits was the um, like when it was repairing itself, and you have that big white glove. Yeah. Oh, that's um, so good. Sewing, sewing back up the air, and I was just like, oh, yeah. That, yeah. that's really nice, it's wholesome and cute, unlike so much of the film. Yeah. And then when when they're like trying to attack the the bits that are coming off of the comet as well, and they're mm. using that like sword and shield kind yeah. of yeah, that is cool to to destroy it. That was all really fun. Like, yeah, I think it. The the pitfalls is that it gets bogged down in all the biblical things. I feel that's when it really s- slows down yeah. and sort mm. of stops from from being a sort of a, a a look through his works to just oh what <laughs> is this? The tone is changing. It's it feels yeah. like a different but part, part is of that script. the tone of those books though? Without reading them, it's really hard to say. Like. It, are those books? They must be satirical because he's not religious enough. For that this would be like no. an homage to the Bible. Yeah. Also, it doesn't make so sense. So there must be a satirical. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, it, it goes through his works, but Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn, they are a part of his works yeah. as well, and they don't really get yeah. touched on. And I would say, like Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn, and those two, those two stories are his most famous mm. works. Yeah. Oh, too too mainstream for um, yeah. Will Vinton to, too to touch on for this film. Yeah. yeah. No, you have to be a hardcore Mark Twain fan. We don't touch on them at all. But maybe that's because uh, it's well, it's Injun got Joe some crazy is the bad racial yeah. overtones. It's got some. It's very dated in how yeah. racist mm. it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Injun Joe being. I mean, they don't even. I mean, he's called Injun Joe, so you know he's. Yeah. <laughs> you know native american but it's yeah it's not it's not subtle but in the in the book it's really yeah bad well, well. It's still oh do you see it um, in the book oh, oh sorry no do you see it in the movie i didn't think so it's just his like screaming isn't it yeah it's yeah. um vaguely see see the guy in the cave at one point when he's got yeah. a knife and he tries yeah he's to got a knife him. and he tries to attack them and he's just he's just screaming at them and you know he's he's just all you see of this character the one 
ethnic character in yeah. the entire movie is them being barbaric, screaming, and trying to murder the children. Yeah. Oof. So, so that was, you like, know, not, not great. Racism was <laughs> fine then. Yeah. They got rid of all the other stuff. <laughs> That was okay to because keep Huckle, which I get confused between Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn stories. Huckleberry Finn's where he he runs, so it's the poor boy that runs away with the with the runaway slave. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, and they float down a river. Yes, and it ends quite quite badly and sad. And Tom Sawyer paints a fence. Tom Sawyer paints Becky's fence or something like that. He's more of a. Ru- I feel like Tom Sawyer is the more like family friendly version. Yeah. Of that story, yeah, and then Hunglebear Finn is more of a tragedy than anything else. So it is weird to have these. Uh, yeah, I think that there's a massive disconnect between child story and Mark Twain yeah. in general. And you, th- yeah. you throw a layer of, <laughs> of uh, claymation on top of that, and it's lost. Let's make War and Peace <laughs> a cartoon. I mean, it's that sort of thing. It's like, what are we what doing? What you said earlier is like that's how you get '80s kids movies. <laughs> that's but could you imagine this live action? I don't want to. I don't. No. That's something that's that's a true that's exactly. a true horror. The eighties eighties live action with eighties CG. I, um... No, I'd watch that. I would watch that. <laughs> in the period, just... especially in the early eighties, there are a string of movies that come out that are pure cocaine, mm. and I feel like this could be a part of that club. I think yeah, yeah to do that much to do only three years of claymation. Mm. and have a feature length film at the end of it there's probably some cocaine and maybe yeah. a little bit of meth going in there as well oh, for the late night is uh, 80s 80s were not doing meth there was so much cocaine on the streets it's 80s it's america mm. it's business it's it's capitalism ever the boom's never gonna it's never gonna end we're gonna keep growing <laughs> and keep making money and doing coke and it's gonna be great but this nothing this can film, stop us this film doesn't scream coke though it screams coke was used to make it this, I feel like. I mean, it screams, it, it, it screams LSD. bad acid. Yeah, trip. it screams LSD. It's a little bit cokey because In... it gets distracted so many times. That's true. Yeah. That is true. That's fair. <laughs> and it but... thinks that it's the smartest person in the and room. Like the devil, the Satan di- diary of Satan thing it wasn't even like a published novel. Oh really? Like it's it's one that he attempted to write so many times and kept scrapping. Why do yeah, those? It's so it's like, like a mysterious this, stranger, isn't it? It's like I mean, a real yeah. deep dive into Mark Twain's work. This is not surface level, which is why I was like, well, is he was his works better known in the eighties than they are now? Like, this is not a film. but you've got the two you've got the two characters from the, his most popular ones, and we don't find out anything <laughs> about them really. Yeah. They are just yeah. plot devices. Yeah, they're they're literally just kids. They yeah. could they could have been yeah. any kids. There's no, there's nothing special about any of them that makes you think, oh, okay, mm. because we know Huck does this in his story, he's going to do this in that. Like, yeah, there's nothing. They're just sort of faintly rumbunctious, naughty children. They're very ambiguous. There's nothing about them that tells us about that those books whatsoever. And then it gets hung up on these other ones, these more esoteric is stories. It, is it? Tr- it's just. Is yeah. it like you? The film expects you to know about the the main ca- the characters, the main stories. I think the film is trying to teach you about the weird the like the the obscure Mark Twain stories. I think that mm. I think the director was like, more you people know, need it, to learn about these weird it ones. It hasn't made Yeah. <laughs> you know what I think? And it, it shows is, how they're not gonna read them. <laughs> it's I think it is the fact that for I'm just thinking because my my parent my family are American. And so I think for they learned Mark Twain in school. Yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure it must have, you know, it absolutely must have. That it must have done a Tom Sawyer or Huckleberry Finn. So it's, again, this let's force what we were do- told, what happened to us, onto the next generation, which boomers are so well known for. It, true. Uh, so, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> they're doing absolutely. what they do best. <laughs> they're like, well... So this film doesn't teach you about like the Huckleberry film and all the Tom Sawyer's. It doesn't. Yeah, it teaches right. you about the shit it that just you teaches you the weird ones. Yeah, and a yeah, well, Genesis. a couple of weird ones, and then just goes off about Adam and Eve for about half an hour. Well, yeah, yeah, that was again. That was one of his weird ones, though, wasn't it? Yeah, that was one. Yeah, of, yeah it goes that's two for of his books. So yeah. long. It's crazy how long that section goes for. Yeah, 
Yeah, because they I... even they stop at one point because there's a storm and get back to the normal story, and then and later then they on they're back like, to... "We didn't finish the story of Adam and Eve." We and know like, oh. how it ends. They bring yeah. sin yeah. to the <laughs> world. Yeah. Although I did, <laughs> there was then one joke in that second bit that that made me laugh quite a bit, which is when Adam's run away and he's trying to hide, and he's got he's made a shack that he's painting camouflage on, but it's paint by numbers. <laughs> and you see like the numbers of the different paints on it and I was like that's quite a good bit is it for fun. kids <laughs> like, is this film is for kids that is reclamation <laughs> but is this film this for is, kids this is... oh I'm so bothered yeah. by it yeah no no he tries to run away I like doesn't yeah. he yeah because she's pregnant yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> well and he doesn't understand yeah, what a and... child is no no he does not know what's causing I think it, it is I a think fish, fish. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then he's trying to like nurse a fish or something, yeah. and it's like, mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's. Yeah. yeah we, weird, weird amount stuff. of visual humor, which I guess because the story otherwise in those Adam and Eve scenes would be so fucking dry. Oh. It's the, the worst They needed story, the visual dude. humor. It's one of um, it's one of the worst stories of the Bible, I reckon. I was worried that it was going to go through the rest of the Bible. Oh god, <laughs> yeah, me too. And I was like, oh, strap in. Let's this get is to where it you know starts. when you you know when you start checking how long there's left. <laughs> Let's. And I feel like this. <laughs> Let's turn Lot's oh, wife into a pillar of salt. Let's go see some <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> Am I going to watch Cain and Abel in Clay? <laughs> like... <laughs> oh, man. Mostly horrific yeah. stories in yeah. that book, I reckon. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, the Old Testament's got some, uh, got some juicy bits. Mm. Yeah, it's a real fucking horror show. <laughs> oh, man, this, um, this film changed. I think this film has changed me as a person. <laughs> yeah. It does. It's. I only watched it yesterday evening, and it's, it already has this sort of weird... Cold. Cement, cement, like um, fever dream esque. Mm, yeah, you know when you have one of those nightmares that's so profound yeah. it sticks with you for a long time, even if it's yeah. not a recurring couple, one. Yeah. Days. It sticks with yeah. you, but not in a particularly good way. Yeah. Oh this, no, yeah. more of a no, stain. This, this is up there of being chased by my headless grandmother in, when I was six. <laughs> <laughs> of, like nightmares, I I can't forget. Yeah. I'm going anywhere. <laughs> Uh, I, I guess if you ha- if like if you had to like rate this movie, <laughs> I don't know how. I don't know how no. you rate how, what how what category? Yeah, what, like fantastic animation. Yeah, yeah, like beautifully done, amazingly like if amazing use of clay. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but they get comments wrong. They yeah. do get comments, get so comments they lose wrong. at least a point yeah. for that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> In- insane story I all over the place. Never want to see it again. Yeah. No, never want to watch it again. Um, yeah, you I don't have to. <laughs> yeah. I have no desire to watch it's it again. Uh... In fact, actually, no. I'm lying. Now talking about it, I want to watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> we we've never had a film so like divisively made where it's like it being the technical side is incredible. The story is nonsensical. Yeah. yeah. And and. Don't know what audience it's for. Don't know what it's made. Why it was made. No. I was trying to find out, and it is not clear. Yeah, it is a. So it's I don't know how mystery. to rate it. <laughs> Basically, so this guy Will Vinton, who made it, did was like a pioneer for claymation. Yeah, and like, was it just like everyone was like, well, you know, do whatever you want, I guess? And he yeah. was like, cool. I love Mark Twain. <laughs> and I'm going to assume everyone else does. And I'm going to make sure everyone yeah, else knows. Everyone's yeah. intimately, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> intimately familiar with it. Uh, and, Mark um, Twain is responsible for one of the worst episodes, double episodes of Star Trek ever. Star Trek mm. Next Gen. <laughs> he shows up in that episode. Oh man, that episode sucks. I hate Mark Twain. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I've been I've been rewatching um, Next Gen actually at the moment. I'm oh I think I'm in season season four. Oh great, so I, season I four. So good. Starts to get, they start to really hit their stride in that season. I reckon one and two are probably absolute dog shit, almost uniformly. They... <laughs> that's most. That's most TV shows. <laughs> they were fun. They were fun. That's that's um, the saving grace of all. Gentle. Of them. Yeah. You can watch them oh, yeah. because they're so much fun. Even the bad. Even the the nadirs of Mark the seasons episodes. are, the Mark are fun. And silly. And... I mean, similarly to Mark Twain, in that they're so random, in mm. that it was like it, the, the first few seasons, it was very much like, what has Next Door Studio got in its props department? <laughs> yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. And like, they were all musketeers <laughs> and like uh, Shakespeare and stuff. And yep. it's like, <laughs> you're very much going back to the nine, like the 20th century <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah. I wonder. Yeah, doing that a lot, huh? Yeah. But yeah, like, how... like uh, it's a. Uh... 
Sorry, I can talk about yeah. Star Trek next gen, especially. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing, I, Mikey, you're going to say it's like how Doctor Who always seems yeah, to Doctor be always old setting, London. Yeah, <laughs> or, or like uh, early 2000s <laughs> uh, Wales. Doctor Who's always going yeah. in a fucking Robin Hood times or Shakespeare old England times. It's, <laughs> yeah. uh, don't <laughs> to be get... fair, it's far easier to like make a show backwards than it is forwards. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very hard to make a I, future show. Yeah, to be fair, TNG doesn't do that. Doesn't do forward particularly well either. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> There's always just a lot of sparkly costumes. Yeah, sparkly jumpsuits. Oh, yeah. um, I, I, I think this don't... film is unrateable. Unrateable. I think this film's like I, I don't not know. as a not as a one number. Yeah, yeah. A what, like a something out of ten. You, you what about can a... rate different parts of it. Ten out of ten for animation. What about yeah. a color? Yeah, I thought... can you rate it a color? <laughs> <laughs> or a va- or uh, maybe a, a uh, maybe that weird like oil slick iridescence. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> like an obsidian. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like a... <laughs> or for some reason like a burnt orange. Octarine. Like a burnt orange. Is <laughs> Octarine. <what> it is. <laughs> yeah. I... It's so smell strange. this. Like, I write I... this. The smell of burning toast. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's exactly it. That's exactly because yeah. you're watching it going. Maybe it's something more serious. <laughs> <laughs> maybe i'm the problem who knows the, the damage that this movie has done to me yeah it's it's it these things you have to assume do imprint on your psyche especially as a kid yeah is this the reason so how why often I, did you watch so did you watch this as like a team it, as well or i watched it a lot this was one of my favorites. and it never made you want to what, read more mark twain or look into who he was oh i looked into who he was I think I read like a picture book of the Tom Sawyer books or whatever, but I didn't give okay. a shit. <laughs> yeah, that's this, yeah. Did, this. I mean, this failed on pretty much every level of what it could, ha- what I can only imagine it was made for. Mm. <laughs> so I was the one child that liked the movie, and I didn't give a shit about Mark Twain. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, I was going to say, I definitely think this has had an impact on you, because I've seen Hug the Sun. This is, <laughs> <laughs> this is close. <laughs> it, I would be lying if I said that this wasn't some sort of inspiration. Just putting something that is so uh, heavily religious into something that's uh, that's child. you got to get them when, you're, when they're young. It was this, yes. and then there was when we, growing up in Perth, there was a a show called the sing me a rainbow which was for kids but just had the most crazy orthodox catholic vibes throughout it yeah. so that were those two things i would i would absolutely say that these were inspirations for that it's just there's something about um religion just trying to be cool with kids and just fucking it up always because they're not <laughs> They're not childlike. Pe- they're not. They're not people that should be around children. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you guys remember Grizzly Tales for gruesome kids? Yeah, yeah, that was a great show. Because that's also horrific yeah. animation. Yeah, that was like claymation horror stories, essentially. That was on at yeah. about half three in the afternoon yeah. after school. Mm. Yeah, yeah, right. it was for kids, but it was like <laughs> genre yeah. horror. Yeah. That's what it was for, it's for to scare kids. Um, what was that? There was like a Steven Spielberg or George Lucas kids sort of anthology called Amazing Tales or Amazing Stories or... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something the Twilight like that. Zone. That scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Those ones, and also the fucking uh, Storyteller, Jim Henson's Storyteller. Oh, I don't think I've seen that. Oh, do yourselves a favor. It's some great, crazy stuff. The Storyteller. It's probably dated and nowhere. That's the thing. I go, <laughs> these things were great. I think it was the storyteller, but I, I don't I mean, know. Yeah. Horror aimed at children is yeah, always a good like time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ruining, ruining your childhood memory, your fond childhood memories is a big yeah. part of this podcast. That's the whole point. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember one of those But stories... yours were all, yours, we haven't ruined it because I don't, I don't think you've, you're reflecting back on this and being like, oh, no. my sweet memories of me no, watching I'm... this have now tainted because of how fucked up it is. Yeah. <laughs> It's when, like, it's similar to, like, <laughs> it's similar, I don't know if you, my partner has uh, non-divorced parents and a functional, uh, no, not a, a functional family, whereas my family is quite Ooh. dysfunctional. Uh, but lovely, but dysfunctional. And I didn't, you don't realize this until later, and then you meet them, and then you're hanging out with their family, and you're like, oh, wait, my family are 
fucked in the head and it's a similar feeling <laughs> you don't know how much damage this is doing to you until you look back and go oh Actually. yeah no i shouldn't have been watching yeah. that yeah. yeah, I get it. Oh now. yeah, no, yeah. no, absolutely. Or you, you go, you get your mates around, and you're like, hey, hey, yeah, let's watch this, let's watch this. It's great. It's not. And um, they're looking at you in like, ab- like hor- horrified. It's like with my, um, I think I'm not sure if I've told this story before about Stronghold and the the wolves and the rabbits. <laughs> okay, are you guys familiar with the game Stronghold? No, no. So it's like a, it's like a castle sim. Um, so you had like, uh, you, you build, build castles, you build, and you could build like, you know, you go to do sieges, do battles, but you could also have like an economic thing. It was a great game. Mm. 10 out of 10 game lives up. I've, yeah, whatever. No, no, um, but what you could do is like design a map. And part of that was you add in animals because like hunting and trying to get rid of rabbits and stuff was like a big part of the, the economic side of the game. Um, and if you, what you could do was create a like square wall like a, a walled in square of and fill it with rabbits and in game uh just in the like ca- in map editor if you then put wolves in there they'd kill all the rabbits yeah and i thought that was hilarious this is the and sims- i thought it was really oh, funny i was like is, wow this look at this control <laughs> yeah 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 exactly um and i remember showing that to my cousin my younger cousin and she was just staring at me like, why are you killing the rabbits? <laughs> and like went crying to her parents. And my, my, I remember my parents being like, what the hell is this? Like they always saw it as like, you know, medieval sort of siege game. And then suddenly it's like, no, she's just killing rabbits in the game. Just over yeah. and now over. Now that you mention it, where's the neighbor's dog gone? <laughs> 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 and i just thought i was like isn't it amazing that this game has this cool mechanic where you like it's so realistic because obviously if you did put a bunch of wolves in a yeah. shed full of rabbits the rabbits <laughs> would die and i just thought that was really cool like tech mm. and yeah rosie was beside herself yeah, she was no, a bit of a wet blanket it. anyway sounds but like she, was she sounds really like a real bummer upset. We used to see how long we, how long she could last before we made her cry when she came over. That's so mean. <laughs> not, not just me. Like me, my mum, my dad, and my brother. That's not better. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, we, it's family, family time. It's fine. Well, she'd just be like, "I'm Rosie Jones," and I'd be like, "No, I'm Rosie Jones," and then my she'd be like, "No, I'm Rosie Jones," and then my oh, dad would be like, "No, I'm Rosie Jones." No, I, I think and, it was um, fair to and bully And she start her. crying. I think it was fair to bully her. Yeah. She, yeah. That's awful. I would have bullied her. So oh much. yeah. No. Yeah. We're not we're not particularly close, but we are. You know, we do just occasionally talk. And she's into her current hobbies. I think are uh, rowing and bridge. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah. yeah, I guess we don't have too many overlapping no. hobbies at the moment. And like hers, where the bridge does overlap the rowing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dan. So so this film. Uh, so out of ten, I'm is... still trying. I'm, I'm stalling well, because yeah. I'm still trying What's to wrap my head around it. The smell of burnt toast out of ten. Yeah, I think that. Okay. Yeah, um, I think it's. It's burnt yeah. toast. Burnt toast out of ten. <laughs> burnt yeah. toast and clay. Yeah. Out yeah. of ten. So oh, man, I, I, I guess with that, um, I have been Dan. I have been Michael. I've been Helena. And I've been Ben. And Ben, where can people find you? Uh, check out Hug the Sun as well if you want to see something that uh, is disturbing. Um, for but deliberately. Children. But deliberately, it really plays into this uh, fucked up shit for kids back in the eighties. Yeah. And that you can find that on Grouse House, which is a YouTube channel. And there's plenty of other good Australian comedy on that as well. Uh, if you're in Australia, I'm on Channel 7, which is a, a television network sh- channel here uh, on Tuesdays in a sketch show called We Interrupt This Broadcast. And if you're in the UK, grab a VPN, set it to Australia <laughs> and go to 7plus.com.au and you can see it on demand there. <laughs> Is this the part nice. where we mentioned we're sponsored by Surfshark? We're not. Ooh, we're not. Yeah. <laughs> we're not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We would have mentioned that. Though, we could be. Yeah. Sure, I can't believe you're, you're not. There. Every every podcast is sponsored yeah. by Surfshark. There, Surfshark. <laughs> that or NordVPN. Mm. Yeah. Or Manscaping. You guys have mans- Manscaped? Yeah. That's always one. I mean, that's a yeah, concept yeah, we do in the UK. Yeah. But um... You guys yeah, have Manscaping as a concept? It's a company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we are, however, sponsored by Squarespace. No, we're, we're not, not sponsored by that. Yeah. We're not sponsored by anything yet. I think that's the big one at the moment. They're doing a big... Yeah. 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 Audible's definitely coming back as well. Audible. Yeah, yeah. quite a bit. 
And don't forget to go and play Raid Shadow Legends. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Guys, we're giving all these companies free advertising. You, Dan, can you bleep Shadow all of these? Legends. Every company <laughs> name, can you bleep out? <laughs> all their... Because <laughs> that'd be really funny. Uh... <laughs> yeah, well, you can find this podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Hilton Pod. That's at H-I-L-T-M Pod. We're on Discord if you want to go and like come and talk about fucked up claymation with us. <laughs> yep. We also have a Patreon um, where you can support the show. Are we doing anything specific for the Patreon this week? Oh, we're going to go find the devil. <laughs> we're going to use your money to go find the well, devil. Well, guess what? Uh, He's in the hearts of all men. Oh, I thought I thought he was in the eye. Just He's the in, left no, eye. He's in well, the eye is the eye. heart. Uh, eyes in the beholder. Hmm. Well, I don't know. <laughs> so I was, um, I was thinking maybe <laughs> as, a, as an extra, if we, if we get a little bit extra cash, um, we could also remake... The Adventures of Mark Twain, but uh, with an icy comet. Live action. Yeah, that's the main. Live, action. Live action for me. Well. Live action. Mm. It's a icy fucking comet. ice comet. And if not, we will claymation this episode of the podcast. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> yeah. But we're gonna go fight the devil first. Yeah, good. Whereabouts are you? I, I live in Birmingham, okay. so in the sort of middle of the country. The only thing I know about Birmingham is when you say Birmingham, people go, Birmingham, or something like that. Birmingham. Birmingham. Yeah. That's all I know about yeah. Birmingham. <laughs> it's, uh, it's quite a thick accent, but I'm not from Birmingham, so yeah. I've just got like, I've got the twang, but not the full full accent. You don't go full uh, Birmingham. I um, My job up until um, last summer was interviewing a lot of people from the from the uh the west midlands of the black country and um they've got the black country is like a really thick accent uh it's like birmingham accent on steroids and um i started really picking that up and my husband would come home and he'd be like you've been talking to someone from warsaw today haven't you <laughs> like, yeah, <I'm>, yeah. <laughs> i feel like we should explain what the black country is oh the black country <laughs> you yeah. just realize that like that sounds weird when you... <laughs> i've heard of it have you have you uh... okay cool. Yeah, cool. i don't cool. know what it is but i know that it's a thing and not yeah. Yeah, it's just soot where there are lots of mines. Yeah, nice. Yeah. And they're called yam yams. Mines? No, the um, <laughs> the people from <laughs> from the black country are called yam yams. Okay. They say, are you from black country? Oh, yam. <laughs> Do they love Margaret Thatcher? No. No. Uh, imagine for the mines? No. No. <laughs> no. Very <laughs> <people> <laughs> 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 Right. Anyway, where, where were we? <laughs> um, yeah, upsetting nightmares. Mark Twain stories. Yes, 